tonight how that volcano is affecting you from holiday makers to business, from school trips to troop movements, and even the WI. Hello, welcome. Hello, first tonight, day five of the ban on flying, and it's very clear how much the impact of the volcano in Iceland is having right across the region. School pupils are stranded in foreign countries, businesses are counting the cost. Even the election campaign has been affected. The Lib Dem leader Nick Clegg had to call off a flying visit to Norwich. But tonight we're concentrating on your stories. Dozens of you have been in touch. Here's Kim Riley. Yes, we've been hearing from Lucky's viewers in all corners of the globe, including Kay Jones from Milton Keynes. She and her family are in the Algarve after flying out from Luton. Her father has died in hospital. She's now anxious to get back to support her 87-year-old mother. My father died yesterday afternoon at ten past four. When you know that you've lost a parent, you're so helpless. All the telephone numbers that you need to ring are all 08 numbers, which when you're abroad you can't ring. I can't do anything. I feel absolutely helpless at the moment. And all I want to do is get back to be with my mum. The Leggett family from Newmarket left Japan on a Heathrow flight on Thursday. Five hours into the flight, they were taken back to Tokyo. Four days there so far with other families from this region. No end in sight, says Tony Leggett. The Vavasur family from Norwich are stuck in an airport hotel in Hong Kong. At one stage, the hotel tried to up their room rate from 225 to 800 pounds a night. We've caught up with two families from the region who are having to twiddle their thumbs in Thailand. These are the Munsons from Tiptree, camped out at Bangkok Airport, waiting for a standby flight, and it seems none too perturbed. It's not too bad, actually. They're looking after us really, really well. Um, we've got these beds made up here. We've been staying here for two nights now. They're supplying us with food and drink. Not too bad. Just really want to get back to London now, though. Julian and Michelle Chadban from Norfolk are enjoying the bars in Bangkok. Our airline is going to Toronto via Athens, which is obviously no use, fully shut. So here we are, are in a room on a room day by day basis. Not much more we can do about it. Robert Dupree's emailed us from St Osith in Essex. Now he's here with a, for a family funeral, needs to get back to New Zealand. Other relatives from South Africa, Bahrain and Hong Kong are also stranded. A number of school parties have been stranded abroad, at least four from Hertfordshire. Fifty pupils from Combaton Village College in Cambridgeshire finally arrived home this afternoon from a field trip to Sicily, where they'd been studying volcanoes. A gruelling 1,800-mile journey involving three coaches and two ferries. We thought that they'd all made it up and it was a joke that they were playing on us, but then we found out that it was real. At first we were really happy because we thought we were going to miss school. Yeah, but, but then when we realised it was going to be like ten days, we were, everyone, everyone, literally everyone was in tears and wanted to speak yeah. to their parents. Safely home. Well, after fighting the Taliban in Helmand province, Afghanistan, some 100 troops of the 1st Battalion Royal Anglian Regiment had been due to return home tomorrow. Well, that's now been put on hold. For the time being, they'll remain at the Akrotiri Air Base in Cyprus. Now, these WI ladies from Pakenham in Suffolk are stranded in Texas after being invited to show the Americans how to serve traditional English tea. Everything from cucumber sandwiches to walnut cake and eclairs. Their hosts apparently loved it and have told them they can stay as long as they want. Kim, thank you very much. So what about business? As ever, there are winners and losers. Here's our business correspondent, Richard Bond. So this vehicle is now going to go to Z Zurich tonight. Right. For a lucky few, the volcanic ash has thrown up a business opportunity. Taxi and chauffeur drive firms are much in demand. This one in St Ives has had 16 vehicles going in and out of Europe over the last four days. We've been ferrying passengers to and from uh, Cambridgeshire into mainland Europe as far as Zurich, Frankfurt, uh, Brussels and Paris. Ferry firms are in the money too. Stenner, which operates from Harwich to Holland, is fully booked until Friday. And DFDS is bringing this ferry out of dry dock early to carry passengers from Denmark to Harwich. We get people turning up uh, unbooked on almost every train that's coming into the port. And where we're trying to accommodate people as much as we can, unfortunately, on occasion, we have had to turn people away. But many more firms are counting the cost. Luton-based EasyJet said today it was losing £5 million a day while its flights are suspended. 
Monarch Airlines, also based in Luton, has more than 60,000 passengers abroad. At Stansted, the baggage handling firm Swissport is in talks with unions about how to get through the crisis. With no flights, its business has dried up. Staff are being asked to take annual leave. This firm in Northamptonshire is losing £100,000 a day. It imports fruit from Africa. Like many others, it's waiting for the clouds to clear. Richard Bond, BBC Look East. Well, with no planes into the country, many people are being forced to find other ways of getting home. For example, six friends from Essex who were stuck in Spain. Kevin Birch is in the village of Little Yeldum. Kevin. Yeah, hello, Stuart. I'm not sure what the Spanish is for good little runner, but still these guys did a pretty nifty deal. Uh, they'd been in Spain riding trail bikes and they got stranded, no flights home, so they only had one option. That was to buy themselves a car. This 24-year-old Mitsubishi, uh, they even got the trailer as well, and it got them home. A thousand miles, here we all are. Let's have a chat with Dickie Walters. Uh, I can't help but notice, Dickie, it's a bit of a squeeze in there. It is a bit, yeah. Uh, two in the front, three in the back and one in the boot. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely packed in. When you first saw this, 24 years old, what did you think? <laughs> Will it get us home? Will it get us home? It was banging and crashing, holding the exhaust, so it was, a, it was a bit of an old wreck. But I suppose by that time, all your options had gone, really. This was the only way. Exactly, yeah. We went to the, the train station, all trains, everybody had the same idea. Um, coach was not really an option. Everybody was trying to do the same. So this was, this was the last option if we wanted to get home. And you were telling me that you started off slowly and gradually increased the speed. Increased the speed, increased the speed, yeah. Yeah, we're cruising, cruising at a good speed on the way. And what, and what was the most anxious moment? Um, when we, we booked the, uh, the tunnel um, at a certain time and it was the, the, the time was getting less and less but then obviously the distance had to be covered. So, uh, and you're still good, to... mate? you still get on together? Yeah, very much so. You're more so now. It's just such a story to tell, you know. <laughs> Dicky lads, thank you very much indeed. I have to say, though, there is no room for sentimentality. This will be going on eBay so these guys can recoup some of their money. From here, back to you in the studio. Kevin, thank you. We can see a little head sticking out of the boot. That's great, <laughs> isn't it? And the situation regarding when our airports might reopen is changing very fast. Joel Mapp will be live from Luton Airport later in the programme. Plus, we're on the stump in Cambridge where each of the main candidates gets 30 seconds to tell us why they should be MP. It's official now. Norwich City are back in the championship.